In this segment we're going to look at section 12.6 which is about planes in three space. Now some of the planes that we've seen up to this point include the XY plane, the YZ plane, and the XZ plane, but of course there are lots of other planes. The first type of planes we're going to look at are those parallel to the XY, YZ, or XZ planes. And the first plane is of the form of any plane parallel to the YZ plane. You can see that it intersects the x-axis. Now any point on the x-axis is going to have y and z coordinates of 0 and in this case we're going to label the x-coordinate A. So we're taking it to be any value along the x-axis. And so the equation for the plane um, that cuts through that point is the x equals a plane because at every point on that plane the x coordinate is a. Now the y and z coordinates could be anything. For example, a12 would be a point on the plane. Next we're going to draw a picture of a plane parallel to the xz axes. Now a plane parallel to the x, uh, the xz plane is going to intersect the y-axis. In particular it's going to intersect it at a point where the x and the z coordinates are zero. The y-coordinate is going to depend on how far away from the origin we are, so we're going to give it the name b. So the point would be 0, b, 0. And the equation of the plane is y equals b because x and z have no um, limitations. They can be any value, but all of the y values will be b. And similarly, you can draw a horizontal plane, or in other words, one parallel to the xy plane. Um, it's going to intersect the z axis and uh, have um, the intersection point of the form 0, 0, let's say c. And so that plane would have the equation z equals c. Now let's take a look at a plane in general. This plane is not necessarily one of the types that we've just described, but we want to be able to um, somehow describe this plane using an equation. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to base the um, equation on a point p naught that is in the plane and a vector n that is normal to the plane or in other words orthogonal to the plane. We're going to let n have the coordinates a, b, c. Okay, and to understand why um, you can completely define a plane just knowing that it goes through a particular point and is orthogonal to a particular vector n, take a look at figure 12.6.2 on page 835. I'm going to do my best to sketch it here. But essentially it's a very long vector and the only reason it's long is to help us to visualize the fact that there are many, in fact an infinite number of planes perpendicular to the vector. Here's one. Let's draw another one in green so that we can distinguish it from the, vec the uh, plane in blue. OK, 
Okay. You can kind of visualize that this vector is going up and to the right, and we have this plane that is a little bit above the, uh, the blue plane. And then we'll have yet another plane parallel to that one. These are all parallel to each other because they're all perpendicular to this normal vector. All right, so just knowing that we have a vector that the plane is um, orthogonal to or normal to wouldn't be enough to determine the plane, but if we know even one point on the plane, then we can narrow it down to one particular plane out of all those infinite planes. So let's say that on this green plane we have the point that we're interested in. We know the three coordinates of that point then being as each point in three space is unique or has a unique set of coordinates, then we know that that's the plane that we're talking about. Okay, with that in mind we're going to go back over here and talk about this plane, um, this general plane and say there is a point P on the plane, then if we connect P naught to P, then we get a vector that lies in the plane and is perpendicular to the vector N. Now this is going to be important when we try to write the equation of the plane because if we can name the the two vectors coordinates then, um, or rather what I should say is when we name the vectors coordinates we know that the two vectors being orthogonal means their dot product has to be zero. Okay, so now let's imagine that somewhere below this plane we have the origin it doesn't have to be below, but that's just how we're drawing it. Somewhere um, there's the origin and we're, because this plane's floating around in three space, and we're going to connect a vector from the origin to each of the points P naught and P. So there's the vector from the origin to P naught, we're going to call it R naught. And since P naught has the coordinates X naught, Y naught, Z naught, the vector between the origin and P naught is going to have those same coordinates. And now let's draw in a vector from the origin to P. And we're going to give this vector the name R. Now remember P is just any random point in the plane. It has X, Y, and Z as coordinates. Okay, now as I said before, the vector connecting P naught to P is orthogonal to N, but more than that, it's going to be the difference, because of the way that it's oriented geometrically, you can see that it's the difference between R and R naught. So if the vector from P naught to P is orthogonal to N, then we know that n dotted with r minus r naught is going to give us zero. Now it may not look like it, but that's the equation of the plane. And to see that a little bit better, let's write out what these, uh, the coordinates of the vectors. So we're going to have a, b, c for n, and the coordinates of r minus r naught are going to be x minus x naught, y minus y naught, and z minus z naught. Now if we take the dot product, we multiply the pairs of coordinates and add the products together. So we have a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught. And of course this is all equal to zero because the dot product of two orthogonals is zero. 
So here we have an equation that's based on the point, the initial point p naught, giving us our x naught, y naught, z naught. And it's also based on the vector n, giving us our coefficients. And because it's based on the point and the normal, it's called the point normal equation of a plane. Okay, so as an example of how to use the point normal form of a plane, um, this is number two from page 841 in your textbook. Or, I'm sorry, rather number four from page 841. It says, find an equation of the plane that passes through the point P. And the point P is negative one, negative one, two. That is normal to the vector n equals negative one, seven, six. Okay, so let's just write down the uh, point normal form of the equation of a plane, which is going to be a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals zero. So remember a, b, and c are the coordinates of um, the normal vector n and x naught, y naught, and z naught are the coordinates of the point p. So substituting we have negative one times the quantity x plus one plus seven times the quantity y plus one plus six times the quantity z minus two equals zero. Now it's just fine to leave the equation in this form, but let's just multiply it out just to see what this is going to look like. So we're going to have negative x minus one plus seven y plus seven plus six z minus twelve equals zero. Combining like terms, we have negative x plus 7y plus 6z. Let's see, and 7 minus 1 is 6, minus 12 is minus 6 equals 0. Okay, now something that I want to point out here is the um, the coefficients, the coefficients of x, y, and z. Notice that the coefficient of x is negative one, the coefficient of y is seven, and the coefficient of z is six. And where did we see those before? Those are the coordinates of the normal vector. So when we multiplied this out, we actually ended up with if we're going to refer to the coordinates of the normal vector as we did before as a, b, and c, we ended up with a times x plus b times y plus c times z minus some constant which we're going to call d equals zero. We're actually going to say plus d and then if d is negative it'll be a subtraction. Okay, so this is not a coincidence, it, it always ends up that the um, uh, coefficients of x, y, and z are the x, y, and z coordinates of the normal vector when you have the equation of a plane. And moreover, anytime you have an equation of this form, this is always going to be the equation of a plane 
with normal vector ABC. So let's write that down. This is always the equation of a plane and the plane has the normal vector ABC. So um, not only can we find any points that we want on this plane, but we also know uh, the normal vector or a vector normal to the plane just by looking at the equation.